I did mention Thursday is Earth Day. And to mark that, this week, WCCO will be bringing you stories about one of Minnesota's greatest natural resources, water. You probably know that Lake Superior is the largest freshwater lake in the world. But did you know it's home to what's been called the loneliest place in North America? Today we meet a local filmmaker helping to renovate and create a climate research station in the middle of Lake Superior on Standard Rock Lighthouse. It's about 24 miles off the Kenewa Peninsula and it was discovered in the 1880s by Charles Standard. Uh, as shipping lanes were becoming more busy, they realized it's a, it's a shoal that rises up from the bottom of Lake Superior up to uh, the water line and about 10 feet below in varying depths. So they decided they want to get a lighthouse uh, built out there in the 1880s. It's been called the loneliest place uh, in the world, the loneliest place in North America. So these light keepers will be dropped out there uh, for a month at a time. You know, imagine in the late 1880s, early 1900s, you know, no radio, no communications. They'd be out there for four weeks, uh, storms. Did you guys buy the lighthouse or did somebody else buy the lighthouse and you're just involved helping to raise money? The Superior Watershed Partnership owns it. The federal government handed all these lighthouses uh, off around the country because they were realizing they're going into decay and they kind of wanted to dump them, right? I guess. <laughs> so, uh, so all these different communities now and, and nonprofits mostly own all these different lighthouses around the country. What got you involved in this project? First Lake Superior, uh, you know, uh, just all the Great Lakes with Minnesota uh, bordering on Lake Superior being up there a lot. Um, it's just fascinating the stories of, of Lake Superior, you know, Edmund Fitzgerald and all these other things. But um, but just researching the lighthouse and then realizing the ties uh, to Minnesota. And then I just love amazing stories. And there's just so many stories of these uh, lighthouse keepers uh, that have been out there um, over the 140 years or so. Explain what NOAA uh, and other science uh, entities want to do with this point of land in the middle of water. Right now, you know, data is collected out there. They can put wave buoys out there, but all that stuff has to be pulled in in the winter. Um, and there is uh, our instruments out there now uh, with some rudimentary power. There's some solar panels out there and batteries, but um, they want to get some serious equipment out there and be able to get year-round uh, data collection. And also, there's interest in biology out there, geology, studying the shoal. Uh, the fishery out there. The whole complicating factor with doing climate measurements on land is that cities grow or shrink and that can have an impact on temperatures even though scientists control for that. It is always uh, you know appreciated though to have that pure data out over a body of water that obviously is not suffering from uh, from buildup or from uh, sprawl, urban sprawl. How can people get involved with this project? What do you need people to donate and what's the time scale for this? First of all we're trying to raise uh, about 150000 thousand dollars that can get this documentary made uh, and we can use this then to launch the larger two million dollar campaign that needs to happen to actually restore the lighthouse and build this uh, this climate research station or convert part of it into the climate research station and also what we plan on doing is uh, documenting what we're doing at Muse Storytelling we're educators and trainers as well so we can make an education curriculum and send it out to all these hundreds of communities around Lake Superior uh, and any of the Great Lakes are really all around the country uh, who have these lighthouses that need to be repaired for various reasons. And they can use uh, our education to help uh, restore their lighthouses. So it, it ends up helping uh, not just Standard Rock Lighthouse, but all around the country or all around the world. Admittedly, these days there is a lot going on in the world and perhaps restoring a lighthouse isn't highest uh, on your list of priorities, but the climate change aspect really does impact us all. Some of the video you saw in that story is from a five minute film that Marty has already produced. A link to that and to more information about the restoration project is posted at WCCO.com links.